this college offense has allowed its team to go 40 and 3 in the past 3 years, set offensive records nationally and university-wise, and has also won a national championship. But will it work in the NFL? A place that has seen its share of hot college offenses come in like it's the crap, but then get smacked around like it's a quarterback playing against TJ Watt. Let's find out. But first, high fives and butt slaps. My name is Coach Ron Mackey. I like to talk about all things football. And today we're going to talk about can this offense, the Michigan style of offense that has won 40 games in the past three years with Jim Harbaugh at the helm, can it be successful in the NFL under the Chargers? So let's get this out of the way right off the bat. Yes, Jim Harbaugh used to be a coach in the NFL for the 49ers back in the 2010s. But that style of offense that he ran back then is completely different than what the offense he ran at Michigan was. For the 49ers, they were a pistol team. They used Nevada's zone pistol read type offense because they had a running quarterback. Now, if you don't know what the pistol zone read is, here is a play and we will cover it. So this is the 49ers versus the Jets. And what's going to happen is you have this man come in motion to line up here and then they're going to run the zone blocking. Now, if you don't know what zone blocking is, it's essentially you've got the gap to the right. Block here, block here, double team, climb, get this man get this gap. If no one shows up in that gap, then you climb to the second level, and then you're going to read whoever comes off the C gap or the last gap outside of this tackle right here. And then as a coach, when I was in high school, and it looks like they do the same thing in this play, is if no one is in this gap right here. So when you read it and there's nobody here, then if you have a running quarterback, you tell them to pull the ball and run. Nobody is here. See, everybody is running this direction. So you got a hat on a hat, and then you're telling your quarterback, which is what Jim Harbaugh did because he had a running quarterback, to run. And then if someone would to come and to get the quarterback, then you pitch it. No one takes the quarterback, so he runs the ball. Here's another example of Harbaugh running the pistol zone read as the 49ers with a slip. And what that means is the line will zone block to their right like this. The tight end is going to go opposite and then he is going to miss whoever comes into this gap because that is who the quarterback is going to read and then he's going to get the next man so if the reason why you would do this if there is a guy that makes the quarterback pull the ball then he has an extra blocker out on the edge that can help him when he's running so this man right here gave the quarterback the pull read now you have an extra blocker in front to get whoever is responsible for the quarterback in this case it's number 50 and now the quarterback in this hardball offense in the 2010s can make his cut based on the block of this man. And the reason why this is so important and why he did this is because now you can take away what the defense tries to do, which is scrape exchange, meaning, hey, you get the running back. I will get the quarterback, but we have a blocker that takes care of that. This was the style of offense Harbaugh ran when he was first at the 49ers in the NFL, which is completely different than the offense they ran at Michigan. You see, at Michigan, they didn't have a running quarterback, so they had to rely on more run schemes, power, duo, counter, things like that, along with shot plays. And that's what we're going to talk about next, Michigan's run game, and can that actually fit in the NFL? So we got Michigan-Nebraska, third and one, balls on the 20, so you know Michigan's going to come out in a very heavy formation. They have three tight ends on the left side, one, two, and three. So this is an overload set to the left, and then they just have one wide receiver out to the right. And all they are going to do is run zone read. And if you want to see if they have the numbers, all you have to do is just count up on the line. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight offensive guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight defensive guys. They are going to make this corner be the quarterback player. So now we have taken him away, and the running back is going to press the center and then make a cutback right here because – when you press the line, you're forcing these guys to get up in all of the trash, which makes it easier for the offensive line to block them. And that is exactly what happened. You can tell there's the cutback. So now he has a cutback lane that this man was supposed to fill, but he couldn't because he had to play the quarterback, even when the quarterback is not that big of a runner. And it goes for six. Now let's look at it from the end zone's point of view. So from the end zone, You've got everybody blocked, double team. He should be climbing up to here 
take out this man, and then just dig everybody else out. But what I want you to notice is the running back's footwork and his aiming. See, a lot of people, when they watch zone, they think that it's an automatic just cut, but he presses the line of scrimmage. He comes right down this hash, and then he sees that there's an opening, and then he just slightly maneuvers into that hole for a touchdown. And he wouldn't have been able to do that if Michigan didn't have such a dominant line to help him. This style of run blocking is very dominant in the NFL, and I think with Harbaugh's coaching ability and the staff he brings in, it could be successful for the Chargers, but they also ran other plays like this. So in this play, we've got Michigan versus Penn State. It is first and 10 on the 30, fourth quarter. Michigan has to score and take some time off the clock as well. So what do they go to? They go to a three by one, meaning they have their one guy down here, which is the tight end, three wide receivers. And what they're going to run is they are going to run duo now. Now, what is duo? Duo is, you can think of it like power without the puller. They're not, they use the same kind of blocking angles, but they're not going to pull anybody. And the great thing about this play is that it is a physical dominating run that is used by most NFL teams in the league. And the purpose of duo is you want to get double teams. So in this play, you're going to have turnout right here, double team between these two guys, double team between these two guys to climb up to this level, and then a single block right here. And the wide receivers, you can do one of two things. You can run a bubble screen, something like this, or you just have them, which Michigan does, come in and just dig people out. And then the read for the running back is you want to read the linebacker. If he goes one way, you go the other way. So in this play, you got the double teams here and here. This is the read. Notice how he was going into this hole. So there is the hole right there. And you couldn't draw it up any better and run it to perfection like this right here. So let's look at the end zone view. So you've got a block here, double team to move up to this level, double team here, turn out. He has to be aware of the quarterback, so that's essentially blocking him. This is who the running back is going to read because you can tell his eyes are looking right at him. This is the man that the running back has to make miss. And that's exactly what happens. Look, he sees that the running back is going in the A-gap. So he can either bang it or bend it back into the B gap, which is nobody is here. And when you have a running back that has vision, and the Chargers do have a running back that has vision, you're able to run plays like this that are successful and get you this kind of result. And the Chargers actually have a running back in Austin Egler who knows how to run the ball really well, and they have a quarterback that defenses have to account for in the run game so they can get results like that. They can also get results running this kind of play right here. We've got Michigan versus Washington in the national championship game. Second and seven, ball in the 12. So when you're down here, Harbaugh likes to run the ball. Michigan comes out in an unbalanced formation and a bunch. So that really messes with the defense, meaning they've got a tight end on the line. They've got a tight end off the line and then two wide receivers down here. This forces the defense to play on this side, which opens up all of this space right over here. So what run does Michigan come out in? They come out in a counter. And the basic way to run this is everybody on the front side, which is this side, blocks down. And then normally on counter, you're going to pull the guard and the tackle. But since they have a tight end in, they're going to pull the guard to kick out. And usually the tight end will wrap around. The beautiful thing about this, though, is that if the defense messes up, meaning they try to squeeze, he should be taking on the blocker that is coming and blowing up, but he goes inside of it, which allows the bounce. And as you can see, here it is. This man right here goes underneath the block, so he has taken himself completely out of the play. Notice all of this grass right up here. So now what's going to happen is since he's going inside, the guard is going to climb, the tight end's going to climb, and then the running back, who the Chargers have, will see this and follow his blockers, which is exactly what happens. Now you have people in space. Blocked, blocked. He has taken himself out of the play here, so he's going to double team. And then there's the cutback with the vision if you have a running back, which the Chargers, like I said, do. And you've got this successful play, and let's see it from the end zone. So I want you to see what Harbaugh is actually doing. He lines up to the right, and then he is going to shift to the left, which confuses the defense like so. Look at how Washington's going around. Now, this is something that they do use in the NFL motions and stuff, and now the play. 
As you can tell, everybody is blocking down on the front side. Block down, block down, 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 base, kick whoever comes. And now he should be blowing the ball up, but he doesn't, which allows them to get outside for a huge gain and a touchdown in a pivotal moment in the national championship game. There you go. They take them themselves out using motion, using counter, and having a running back that understands the blocking concepts. These run plays are exactly what is run in the NFL, so they will have success with the Chargers. And they're not relying on just one scheme like the Eagles use an inside zone. So Harbaugh has learned from his first stint in the NFL that you have to have a mix of different run concepts to actually be successful. And he's done that while he's at Michigan. So those will carry over to the NFL. But what about passing? Because the NFL is a passing league. You can't just run the ball over and over again. If you think that's the case, then go ahead and ask Michigan's former OC how that worked out for him at the Ravens. Speaking of the passing game, though, the Chargers are built right now for actually passing the ball. That is what the GM, their former GM, has structured. to go fast, sling the ball, and they are kind of successful at it. But if you add the running game, which Harbaugh is going to bring from Michigan to Michigan's passing game, they could be successful, especially if they run concepts like this. We've got Michigan, Michigan State, second and 10 on the 22-yard line in the second quarter, and Michigan comes out and does something pretty cool. They come out in a two-by-two, two, but like you see in the NFL this past year, they're going to motion this guy to be the number two receiver. What that does is it opens up running lanes for this guy because he is going to bump out. These linebackers are going to bump because of the motion, and it gives a free release for this wide receiver right here. So you have the motion, see the bump, and then look at the release. Nobody is there to jam this wide receiver. So now he has all this space, and then they run a great play where they drag this man and the defense that Michigan State is in grabs him, and now he has to chase, which opens up space behind him for a post, which is what happens, and then you're able to create space for your players. We've got the end zone view. You see the movement, and then you see the free release, which is great, and you just put a ball on a dime. Now, if you can tell me, do the Chargers actually have a player at the quarterback position that can make a throw like this? And I am going to say yes, because that is a dot right behind the defender's ear. So the defender has his back turned. He cannot see the ball right here, and they put it on a dime, which the, the Chargers actually have a quarterback that can produce these same results right there. And if you don't believe that the Chargers actually have a dude at quarterback, you can check the stats out right here on screen. He's got an arm, so he can make throws like this, and he can also make throws if the Chargers run concepts like this one right here. Michigan, Ohio State, second quarter, third and 10, ball in the 22-yard line, and Michigan comes out and utilizes motion, which is something I love, and it's what you see in the NFL as well, this motion to the outside, motion to the inside, and the reason why you want to do that is because Ohio State is in man-to-man -man right now. So man, 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 he is going to have have the back man man and right now Michigan doesn't have any leverage but Jim Harbaugh is going to create leverage by having this guy come in motion fast he's not jogging he's sprinting and that allows a free release and it also keeps this guy on the outside of the wide receiver which is important because he is going to run a crossing route across the field and the defender is going to be on his outside. That allows an easy release and lets him get into space without having someone put their hands on him. Notice when he goes into motion and snaps the ball, the defender is already out leveraged to the inside. He is inside this defender. That's what leverage means. And now he has a free release through the middle of the field because everybody else has a man. And that is the beauty of using this motion, and it's something that the NFL does a lot this year. So you've got the free release. Nobody is able to put hands on him, and he's able to make that throw. Again, the Chargers have a guy that can make this kind of throw, so these kind of concepts work really well in the NFL. And when we look at the end zone view, you can see how the window is right there. Notice the window. All he has to do is put it out here 
because that is where the grass is. When you hear people talk about grass, that's what it's talking about. An area of the field that doesn't have a defender. There is no color in this grass. The closest defender is in the middle of the field, and we're trying to throw it just outside the hash right out here, which the ball is placed right between the defenders. That is a dot. There is not that much space, but he is able to drop it in that window, which the Chargers have a guy that can do that, and it allows him to make a throw and to make defenses pay when they go man to man. All right. So you, if you have a quarterback, you can make throws like that. But what about scheme? What about making someone so wide open that you or I could actually fart the ball out there and make a touchdown? Well, Harbaugh's got that because he is borrowing from the greatest minds of the NFL, and he's running plays like this. We're in the semifinals of the college playoffs. It's Michigan, Alabama. Alabama's already scored, so we Michigan has to get something going or else this could be a blowout. You're going to see Harbaugh continue to use motion to gain an advantage against the defense, and he's going to bring this man, who he starts at number one, to come in to be a bunched number three H-back, and that causes the defense to make a check. And what you want to do in this kind of situation, you want to make the defense confused. And you do that by using motions and shifts and everything like that in the red zone as well as anywhere else, but specifically in the red zone. And that is what Harbaugh is doing here. So the H, the guy comes in, and now he is an H-back bunch. And the beautiful thing about this is now these guys have to communicate who's got what. And then the play design is something I love. They are going to be running crossers all across the field like this to build a wall because they know these people, these defenders are in man to man. So if you have everybody running to the right, what Michigan does is they have their running back leak out to the left because this man right here has him man to man. And if everybody is uh, making a wall like this, he is going to have a difficult time getting around it. If he goes underneath the wall, then he's trailing. If he goes over top the wall, then there's no one there and the running back has leverage on him. And when we snap the ball, you can tell that the wall is built right here. Everybody is covered up essentially and there's nobody in this green area. There is a miscommunication. They don't switch off or do what they're supposed to do. I don't know the rules because I am not Coach Saban. But the result is someone messed up and left them wide open. If we look at the end zone view, you can tell who has the running back because he is number 32 staring right at the running back. The only thing I don't like is you can look at his eyes. He is looking this way. So that could be a tip off, but that's just something I notice when I watch film. When the ball is snapped, no one knows. No one. Look, 32, who was eyeing him to begin with right here is pointing out, hey, yo, someone get this man. But everybody else is either running with their man they're supposed to get or blocked off with the uh, crossing routes, which allows the running back to get so wide open. You or me could make this throw, farting it out of our rear end. So Harbaugh's concepts that he ran at Michigan are NFL concepts that can be applied to the NFL. He's got the run game, but what is the third thing? Well, in the NFL, you have to be tricky. You have to call your plays and kind of trick the defense when the timing is right, and he does that. But if you want to see how he does that, you want to check out this video right here.